Just when you thought things were not going to get worse, well, you guessed it. They got worse. We had the S&P 500 down 1.1% on the day. We had the Russell down 2.3. The Dow went down 1.3. And we had the NASDAQ down 1.6%. So we have to break it down, go over charts, stocks, earnings reports that came out today in the after hours. And we're going to go over how I'm making sense of all this. What am I doing in the market? So sit back, relax, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon down below if you want all my moves in the markets. And by the way, today is the first of the month. It's the best time to sign up. So check it out down below. And you guys can get 50 bucks free from M1 Finance also down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. And it might confuse you. You're seeing the markets down. The VIX went up 14%. And you might be scratching your head thinking to yourself, wait a second, weren't the markets up earlier in the day? And if you're asking yourself that, you are correct, my friend, because the markets were up and not up just 0.2, 0.3%. The markets were actually way up earlier in the day. Let me show you guys this before we break down the larger time frames. Look at this. SPY went up to about, where was this, 465 464 earlier in the day and yesterday it closed at about 456 so at one point in time spy was up almost ten dollars on the day and you were looking at that probably earlier myself included and we were like yes this is perfect but i had the voice on my shoulder telling me stas this might be a bull trap. And we actually posted about that on Patreon. And we talked about it in my earlier video today. And it ended up being a bull trap, guys. Because look, we went up 10 bucks, We hit 465 And then in a straight line, this thing went down from 11.30 a.m. on the East Coast at 465 That's where it was. And it went all the way down to 450 at the close. So the next four and a half hours after we hit that high... It was a complete bloodbath. I mean, if you look at the percentage here, it was a 3% loss intraday, guys, from 465 down to 450. And if I pop up the 10 day chart again, you guys can see clear as day the rally was a bull trap, right? We got rejected right around 465, which was a lower high compared to the previous high, which was 467. You guys can clearly see that. And on the 20 day chart, you can see that as well. We hit the 180 SMA where we failed multiple times in the past couple of days. You can see that clearly. Once here, a couple days ago, a couple days before that, about three, four times we failed at this point. And today we did it again. We took the lows out from yesterday and a couple of days before yesterday. And bears are 100% in charge, both on SPY and and on Triple Q, let's pop that up. Um, Triple Q also got rejected right by the 180 moving average at a lower high. The rally we saw yesterday <clears throat> ended up being a bull trap. That's pretty much what we're seeing. And we took out the 390 low from a couple of days ago. We hit 385. And let's see the intraday move on Triple Q. This was at 400 bucks earlier in the day. And it hit 385. So we dropped... Three and a half percent intraday on Triple Q. I don't even want to know what the Russell did. Let's pop up the Russell. This dropped a whopping, oh my God, almost five percent intraday from 2250 to 2150. So let's pull up some longer time frames here. Let's see where we're trading. So the Russell is now back towards the bottom of the channel that it was trading within for pretty much all of 2021. I think we might see some sort of short-term relief rally at about 2150. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking as this has been a support multiple times for months. And when it comes to Triple Q, Triple Q, it broke, obviously, the 180 SMA on this four-hour chart. We can see that clear as day. The head and shoulders also playing out that we recently called out. And this is probably going to 382. You know, we've been saying that for a couple of days. That was the high point from early September. And for SPY, it already hit our price target of 350, um, well, actually 450, rather, which was the, also the high from the uh, beginning of September. So, And it seems like we're actually under that point. So at this point in time, guys, look, we hit the lows. Well, not necessarily the lows on the four-hour chart, but we took out the lows on the 20-day chart. 
we might be seeing a relief rally again. Don't be surprised. Maybe not tomorrow, but at some point this week, maybe next week, we see another pop, but that could also turn into a bull trap. So be very careful. So what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below. These markets are unbelievable. And the VIX, I almost forgot, the VIX is actually at a multi, 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 multi month high right now. I don't even know how many times I just said multi. But if you look at this one year chart, the VIX is obviously nowhere near where it was back in 2020. Actually, this is the three year chart. Let's pull up the one year. Look, the one year shows now the VIX is getting close to that yearly high, which was 37 back in January. I guess we saw a lot of volatility back in January. I'm forgetting now what happened back then. Uh, but look, volatility is here. That's what you need to know. VIX is going ballistic, and we have to be monitoring it here um, in the mid-30s, high-30s. You know, it could end up getting there. Who the heck knows? So, again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button if you guys are finding value in this video and in general with my videos. I really do appreciate you guys, as always, supporting me, hitting the like button, doing all that. It helps me out in the YouTube algorithm, and I really do appreciate all you guys. I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. I say it pretty much every single video, but it's true. I do appreciate all of you. So let's now talk about some stocks that number one, the first one, I don't know how it did, but it closed green today. It's Applied Materials, AMAT. This is one that we've been watching. I've been calling it out. We've been talking about it, quite frankly, for a couple of weeks at this point. We actually called it from about 125 to 145. And I mentioned to you guys, look at the ascending triangle. It might play out. It ended up playing out. It went from 145 to 160. We pulled back. We tested 145. We called that dip. And now we're starting to rip back up. This stock went up 3% on the day. On news that Citigroup reiterated a buy rating and they actually increased their price target from, I believe it was originally 160. Now they increased it to $175 per share and it broke out above the 50 moving average on this news. We almost took the all time high out, but not quite yet. We hit about 157 and this also got hit as the markets were selling off. I think it was up 6% at one point on the day and it ended up closing up. 3%. So we have to watch applied materials here as it's right around 145, 150. I think, me personally, guys, this is all my opinion. I think this is a buy zone for the stock that overall, let's be honest, it's breaking out. It's trading pretty nicely when a lot of other stocks out there look like complete dog, you know what, especially some of these growth stocks. I mean, they're getting obliterated. I mean, DraftKings, we're talking Chewy, we're talking stocks like um, Beyond Meat. These stocks are getting thrashed right now. ChargePoint, GameStop, Square. Square's under 200 now that I'm looking at it. Holy crap, guys. These stocks are getting killed. Uh, Square's actually down about 30%. So, uh, I mean, this is crazy stuff, guys. I didn't think we were going to sell off this aggressively in certain stocks. And that goes to show the stock market for you, right? It does the unthinkable sometimes. And it always, not always, but a lot of the time, it does the unexpected. And that's why you have to be prepared for all scenarios. So we're getting killed in a lot of stocks out there. Uh, but again, Applied Materials is holding the trend pretty nicely. So I'm watching it for that reason. Snowflake also is looking decent. They just reported earnings, which fun fact, I didn't look at their earnings yet. We're going to look at them right now um, together. They did 51 cents in the red EPS versus negative six cents. So um, they, they missed by a long shot. They lost 51 cents per share and they did sales of 333 million versus what is this here um three actually 334 million versus 305 million so they beat EPS or rather they missed EPS they beat revenue and do we see any guidance they raised their full year product revenue guidance so that's a good sign and the stock went down nine percent on the day closed at 311 and after hours look at that we're gapping up nicely. We're at 350 right now. So the stock is up a good chunk here after market hours. It is up to be exact about 11%. So it actually recovered all of those losses from today. So if you guys own Snowflake, awesome. You're doing well. Me personally, I don't own it. But hey, 
finally we're seeing a little bit of green and at least one stock here um, in the markets right now. And overall, I'm seeing a bullish divergence on the four-hour chart here. That's one thing that's sticking out to me. We're seeing volume push up. So if we have a recovery day tomorrow, which I have no idea what the heck's going to happen. Obviously, I'm not a fortune teller. But let's say tomorrow, the next day, we have a recovery. Uh, maybe snowflake, bullish divergence, momentum's kicking up, decent earnings, guidance raised. Maybe this thing starts to break out. Um, we're already in the mid 300s, 350 right now after hours. So I'm going to put my alert maybe at 355. I don't know. I mean, if it breaks that point, maybe we start ripping um, back to 375, 380. Again, if the markets see a relief rally overall. And don't get it twisted, guys. If the markets continue dropping, Snowflake probably will drop more, even though they just reported good earnings. It doesn't matter. If the overall market's going down, it's going to get destroyed most likely. Um, and another thing I've been noticing in the markets, guys, Apple has been holding things up. Um, Apple, it went up like 3% yesterday or the day before. Um, I think that was yesterday. And today it only went down 0.3%. So could you imagine if Apple went down 5% or something like that in a day? And big tech in general, I mean, today, let's see, Facebook went down 4%. Um, Google probably went down a little bit. So if big tech in general, Apple, if it led the way down, if they all fell in unison, the markets would have gotten hit way harder today. And I'm not sure... Um, if that's new to you guys, you probably know that already, but for the few that don't know, Apple, the big tech stocks, they dominate the market. So be mindful of that. CrowdStrike. Let's talk about CrowdStrike because like Snowflake, they also reported earnings and okay. It looks like they are, they're actually moving up a little bit. The stock went down 7% on the day. It closed at 201, but now it's up to about 205, pushing 206. So let's see what they did. Let's pop the live news tab up. Um, they did 17 cents EPS versus 10 cents, so they beat there. Sales came in at 380 million versus 363.5 million, so double beat for CrowdStrike. And they see Q4 EPS between 19 and 21 cents versus versus 16 cents estimated. So that's a nice beat for guidance. They see sales of 406 to 412 million versus 400 million for the next quarter. That's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That's solid. So double beat guidance is up for the next quarter. And it seems like for the next year, full year 22, EPS and sales guidance is above estimate. So this one's interesting because overall, it's a falling knife. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to say that or to even spot it, right? And we're also trading under the uptrending channel that I actually outlined a couple of videos ago. So that's a bit worrisome. But the fact that we had good earnings, guidance, all that good stuff, and coupled with a potential relief rally coming up, this could be a mover. If we do see that relief rally, we see a lot of stocks go up. CrowdStrike might lead the way, you know. The thing with these high growth stocks is, guys, when the markets are heavy in the red, you notice they're also heavy in the red and they're outpacing what the markets go down. CrowdStrike's a perfect example. S&P went down 1% today. CrowdStrike went down 7%. And it works the opposite way as well. So if we get that relief rally, S&P goes up 1%. 2%, something like that, CrowdStrike might rip 10%, and it has the incentive to do so because volume's kicking up, earnings were good, and quite frankly, it's oversold, so it might just do that. We have to watch it, so keep your eyes on CrowdStrike. Five below FIVE is another one that reported today. They went down 7% on the day. They closed at 189, and now after hours, Wow, they hit 214. Holy crap. And now they're trading at 205. So the stock is up 8%. It recovered all of that loss and some. Now they're actually moving up um, above what they lost, which is good. So let's see what they reported, guys. Let's see here. They did 43 cents of EPS versus 29 cents estimated not too shabby there and when it comes to revenue they did 608 million versus 563.68 million so double beat for five below and they see net sales for q4 between 985 mil <coughs> to one bill versus one bill estimated not too bad Four-year 21 sales 
of 2.83 to 2.85 bill versus 2.81 bill estimated. So it seems like the double beat guidance is looking pretty good. Let me take a sip of coffee, guys, because my throat, I can already tell, it's getting a bit itchy. Hold on. And, uh, yeah, we're seeing momentum, which is always great. We're seeing momentum to the upside. And let's redraw this wedge that we were seeing. And quite frankly, now that I'm looking at it, we're still in the wedge. And I would like to see five below break out of 220 before even considering taking this trade. So I'm going to just be patient on it, right? We're already gapping up above 200. Let's see if we could break 220. I mean, patience is key. From there, if we break the wedge, we take the highs out from late November, just about 10 days ago, 220 breaks. Hey, this could end up being a mover. So watch out for five below. AI also reported today. Let's see what they did. I mean, you guys know this chart is horrible, and it's been moving down. Today it went down 8.5%, and it seems like it's only up a buck after hours, which is really nothing considering it went down three bucks at the close. So let's see what they did. They did 23 cents in the red versus 28 cents. So they beat EPS um, and it was 28 cents in the red was the estimate for EPS guys. And sales came in at a whopping 58.3 mil versus 56.9 mil estimated. So double B for C3 AI and they see Q3 sales between 66 and 68 mil versus 65 mil. So guidance is up. And they see full year 22 sales of about 248 to 251 mil versus 246 mil. So not too bad for guidance. They double beat. But to be honest, I am not looking to trade this until it breaks the trend. Um, I'm just being real. So I'm not touching it until it says eh, maybe it breaks uh, 45, 50 bucks. That's where I'm going to be watching it. And we're finally starting to see a retracement, even though it's nothing that I would even consider buying yet. But we're finally seeing a pullback in AMD. AMD went down 6% today, hit an all-time high recently of 164. Now it's trading at 150. If this thing starts getting down to 135, 140, right by the 180 SMA, that could be a short-term bounce spot. That might be a spot where buyers step in. They have, they have done that in the past, and overall the trend still looks pretty good out of all the stocks out there in the markets, guys. AMD, NVIDIA, these charts look probably some of the best charts out there, along with Apple, Google as well. You know, these stocks have been holding up within this sell-off, um, but now they're starting to give in a little bit. You know, AMD is, uh, again, went down 6%. So if this starts going more towards the 180 SMA, I would be heavily inclined to maybe pick up a little bit. Um, NVIDIA too, even though NVIDIA didn't go down as much, it only went down about 3.8% today. Um, if this thing starts going down 270 275 which is right by the 180 SMA where, like AMD, NVIDIA buyers have stepped in every single time. Religiously, it's gone down to that 180 SMA. So if buyers step in 270, 280, at that point, it would be oversold. That would be a pretty decent spot, in my opinion. So overall, guys, look, the markets are volatile. I'm still hoarding cash like a madman. And I'm looking heavily to, uh, to, to, what's it called here, average down on certain positions. You know, DraftKings is one of them that I'm down on. I want to add more to DraftKings. A lot of you guys have been asking me about it. I still own DraftKings. I want to buy more. You know, Snapchat's another one that I want to buy more of. I own that. Um, you know, these are just some growth stocks. Obviously, I own a lot of other stocks that we're not going to get into in, uh, in this video, but I really want to focus on ones that are just getting slaughtered right now, which again, DraftKings is at the top of my list. I want to look for a re-entry when it comes to Coinbase, Voyager as well. Those are two that I'm looking at. So yeah, I'm just hoarding cash, doing my thing. Let me know what you guys are doing. Let me know down below in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, drop me a comment. I just said that I think whatever. 
Do your thing, guys. Let me know. And check out the Patreon if you guys want to join. Today's the best day to do that. You get all my buys, sells, call-outs, morning update videos, all that good stuff on Patreon. Make sure to also get your 30 or 50 bucks now from M1 Finance, two stocks from Weeble. All of that's linked down below. And check out my video from earlier, three stocks about to squeeze. I'll pop it up here. I'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out.